What's up friends, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Uh, a while ago I published a painting process of using the three uh, new primaries that I love to use. And I showed you, uh, let me show you here, uh, this version of the painting. Now, I did another version that's a little more well planned, a little more measured, uh, and I'm sure some of you may have not seen it. I posted it on Instagram mainly. Uh, and today I want to do a comparison between the two because it's very interesting. I find that when I do paintings that are really quick, uh, some of my uh, best characteristics as an artist come out. And when I do it more measured, other things are much better, but other things are lacking. So this is what I want to do today. I want us to look at the two paintings and sort of compare them and just uh, I'll talk a bit uh, about what I've been doing. And also uh, I'll show you another painting I did uh, yesterday, I believe. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first one and I'm sure many of you recognize this one. Uh, it's the one I did uh, and I shared the full process and one thing that, <laughs> that I was uh, I was told that about the washes that are uh, not so good are not so even now this has a lot to do actually with uh, the paper itself um, I find that for me at least it's very challenging getting a an even wash in the moleskin and it could be partly my fault because I am a bit tempted sometimes to try and add some details to the sky and add some interest. And you don't really have to always add details or interest to the sky. Uh, you can just give a flat wash like the one I'm going to show you soon. Um, and so I did try from uh, after this one to do some more even washes. And you can get an even one uh, as long as you don't try to be too adventurous. Um, so this is it in terms of the washes. Now, um, I think the simplification here is pretty good. Uh, the values are on point, uh, which makes it look um, believable. And the contrasts create uh, some very interesting effects, which I discussed in the painting process. But if some of you just want to get like the review of the main thing. So um, when you have these kinds of strong contrasts with the chimneys, and uh, the sides of the roof of the buildings here, it just creates a really good sense of three dimensionality. Uh, and I think I was able to achieve it here. You can also see it, uh, I think it's really visible um, in this one, this little isolated uh, barn or, or structure here. Um, and also in the fields actually, if you uh, look at them and if you focus on them, you can uh, get a good contrast with the trees, uh, the bushes, um, even this area, this brown area here, and a good separation with the foreground that was significantly lighter, also in the reference uh, photo. Now, one thing that I think I was able to do really well here and got lost in the process of the longer, more well-planned painting is preserving the uh, vibrancy of the colors, especially for the roofs. And in the original reference, it was a very pure, strong, uh, orangey red. And you can see here that it just feels that way. And um, I, I remember, you probably remember when I told you that if you tend to m mute your colors too much or mix them too much, and someone also commented that uh, more e examples will be good. So this is a really good example of being able to use the purer, more vibrant colors, as opposed to this one, which we'll see in a moment that isn't. So uh, you wanted an example, and this will be a good one actually. Um, so here I was able to preserve that, which creates, I think, beautiful contrast with the walls, uh, with the chimneys, the angles here on the roofs really help to structure their, um, their shape. You understand that the roof breaks in the direction. This one, this side here turns more there, this one towards us. And so you just get a very good sense of what's going on. Now the drawing itself is a little more messy. The painting also is a little more messy. It's not as accurate. Um, as it could be, but this is exactly it uh, with the moleskin. I usually, my approach, my mental approach, again, not saying that you can't uh, get more accurate results, but my mental approach is uh, more lighthearted and more fun and experimentation. So this is it in terms of this one. And now I want to show you the other one, okay? The more well-planned. So here you can see the second version I, I did of this uh, very same scene and quite a few differences in how I treated this. Now, what I tend to do when, uh, because I wanna address the point of the um, uh, vibrancy, okay? So what I tend to do when I work on a more uh, well-planned um, piece, 
what I tend to do is mix more. I'm trying to get the value that I, the color that I think I need. And what happens is I end up over mixing and you see the difference here. If you compare, for example, um, the walls of the buildings, even this dark wall or the light part of the wall, and you compare it to the roof. So the roofs here are much more happy. They're much more vibrant. And this is something that oddly enough, I kind of lose when I don't work as spontaneously as uh, in the previous uh, version of this painting. Um, now, if we go back to talk about the washes for a moment, so you can see that the washes are much better. I do have this weird phenomenon here uh, that the washes still, some lines and streaks of the brush come through. I don't remember having that in the arch paper, but I will have to experiment no, just to under uh, more just to understand uh, what it means. Um, so yeah, but still the wash is fairly even definitely compared to this one. There's less blooming, uh, all sorts of things like this. The, the background here that I didn't even uh, add in this one. So now you can see it. You can see that this is uh, sort of a, a far away um, ocean or, a, or a beach or coastline with some mountains in the background. Uh, the one building I was able to preserve some of the colors purity was this one here. It really got lost in the mixing. Um, so yeah, that's it. Now, in terms of the drawing itself, this is definitely better. This is more accurate. This is more loyal to the reference, uh, which which doesn't really matter this much, but just uh, you get a better composition because of it. Because if you look at this structure, it's absent here. And the reason why is that I literally didn't leave enough room for it. I started here, made my way right, and I just didn't plan out accordingly to leave room for this structure. And and I really felt sorry for it because it's, it's a nice addition to the uh, composition and also because it cuts through uh, this far off mountain line, which is, uh, which is really important if you want to get an interesting uh, composition. If you just have everything below the, the farthest land you can see, it can get a bit boring and, or, or not as interesting as it could have been. So uh, with this one, I'm really pleased that I did get it uh, to be as interesting in terms of the composition and the drawing itself. Um, now, one thing that I was commented about with this one, and it's definitely a flaw of this one, is that I just didn't know what to do with the foreground, and it happens to me quite often. I tend to overwork it and try to really represent what I see in the reference image with, when it's just not a good approach because the eye can only focus on so many things at once. And so you can see here, I just really barely did anything. But here I tried to convey the parting and the fields. And honestly, if it was just be like this, it would be, would have been much better. There's no need for all those extra details. It just doesn't read well. And worse than that, it just takes away from this uh, section here. Okay, so uh, this is just something I wanted to show you because I find it fascinating. Uh, on the one hand, you have a more well-planned, more thorough uh, painting. The drawing is more accurate. The perspective, the composition is built, is better built. The values are very accurate, <clears throat> all the elements of the, the distance and the foreground and background are present, uh, this lovely little cabin here, everything is very accurate, but I tend to lose the vibrancy of the colors, unlike this one. When I go more spontaneous, I'm able to preserve some of it. So I think for me it's really a matter of, and this is uh, also responding to uh, another comment I got, um, I think for me it's a matter of actually embracing more patience right now. Uh, because if you remember my quality versus quantity video, um, I gave that example and I think I'm well beyond the quantity stage. So what I need to do right now, I have two main challenges. The one is to be more patient and work more methodically and slowly on these larger paintings, not on sketches, but on larger paintings or more uh, finalized paintings while noticing that I don't overmix, I don't... Um, give too much importance to elements that aren't as important uh, and things like this. Okay, so really this is a challenge for me um, and this is what, what I will focus on right now, mainly not losing the vibrancy of the colors, which I think I was able to correct in the last few uh, paintings, quite honestly. Uh, one thing I didn't mention and I really like, I think in both of them, is that there is a variety in the colors. So as you see here, the greens are very cool, very cold. Uh, and as you go down to the left, you get a little warmer, you get some more uh, yellow in them, you get some more brown, some dim greens. Uh, also here, there's a nice variation of the field. I think that's a good representation of it. Uh, not over trying, not, uh, um, not trying too hard to, 
to convey every every line of, of whatever trees or <clears throat> bushes um, or, or cropping that is just being able to represent it more simply um, and there's a lot of variation even in the foreground that I don't like the drawing itself but the variation exists so I am very pleased uh, with that aspect okay so I just thought it would be interesting for you to see the two um, together uh, just to understand uh, what's the difference right now for me and why I think both are valid and good practice okay if you uh, if you can alternate between the two <clears throat> and sometimes produce uh, these more spontaneous works and sometimes produce these more detailed uh, slow works I think you can improve really fast but the key is I think not to get too stuck on one of them because if you just end up doing a lot of spontaneous work uh, you wouldn't know how to approach a more detailed work um, a slower manner, a more uh, finalized look. But if you only do these, you lose a lot of the practice value and you just work so slowly. Okay, so uh, there are definitely advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages <laughs> to each one of them. And the, like, the holy grail of practicing, I think, is all to always alternate so you get the best of both worlds. Okay, so uh, this is it in terms of the comparison. I hope you enjoyed it and let's wrap up this video. By the way, before we really wrap up, I uh, just thought some of you may want a more uh, comprehensive look on both of them simultaneously. So just wanted to give you this chance. I'm sorry about the light conditions. There's a lot of shadows here. I know it's from the window, um, but just thought some of you uh, may want to see them uh, side by side. So here it is. And maybe I'll even try to flip it like that um, so you can see both uh, in light. Okay, so hopefully this... Uh, gives you a better view and a better understanding of the difference between the two. So anyway, let's wrap it up. This is it friends, I hope you enjoyed this comparison video and just seeing what I've been up to uh, lately. Uh, I hope to publish another, um, another video of a painting process, full painting process, um, and I have some other plans in terms of uh, mixing, color mixes, primaries, and uh, things like this, okay? So many good things to uh, look for, and I will see you again tomorrow.